Montana's news leader, this is the MTN New News. Good afternoon. Thanks for joining us on the new news. I'm Andrea Lutz. It is no surprise to hear about staffing problems anywhere in Gallatin County, but this time it's impacting kids. We'll have that story in a minute, but first. California Governor Gavin Newsom will remain in his position after voters rejected a recall by a two to one margin. Here's today's leading look. The final count could take days due to the high number of mail in ballots. Newsom was at risk of being replaced by Republican talk radio host Larry Elder. The governorship is up for reelection though next year. In Missoula, two candidates will face off for Missoula's mayor in November. One is the incumbent, John Engen, and the other is Jacob Elder. Engen coasted with 51% of the votes. Elder had 26% of those votes. In Butte, the Lloyd Barris trial continues today. Already the jury heard emotional testimony from a police officer who was in hot pursuit of Barris moments after Broadwater County Sheriff's deputy Mason Moore was gunned down. The officer said gunshots were flying in his direction as he followed the vehicle down I-90 at speeds at over 100 miles an hour. A bullet even penetrated his patrol car and his fellow officer, Rich O'Brien. He testified that he didn't realize how close to death he'd come until the chase had ended. And more and more bears, well, they're getting into garbage in Whitefish. Montana Fish, Wildlife and Parks is asking residents to take some proper precautions. Officials say 19 black bears have gotten into garbage or eaten fruit in Whitefish's urban areas. And the city of Whitefish has an ordinance requiring homeowners to use animal resistant garbage containers, even keeping those garbage receptacles inside until the day of collection. Unsecured trash cans cannot remain at the curb. And that's today's leading look. Well, we're going to see mild to warm temperatures across the region today. You can see a lot of 70s and 80s, but let's switch to what tomorrow looks like. We got 50s, 60s, and 70s tomorrow, even a chance we could see some rain. And the reason is, we got a cold front heading our way. This is going to be our first cold front at the end of the week or actually end of the weekend, Saturday, Sunday, sandwiches in between there. We'll have another, another cold front coming in and that one actually may hold on and give us a better chance of seeing some rain and maybe even some mountain snow. And if you're counting at home, we're a week away now, seven days in counting until fall. And if you're taking notes and I know those kids out there, only 46 days until Halloween, it'll be here before you know it. A complete look at your forecast is coming up. It's no surprise to hear about staffing problems anywhere in Gallatin County, but this one was very concerning because it's affecting kids. Staffing is at some critical levels in, in certain specific areas. The district has more than 100 open positions they are looking to fill as soon as possible. Five custodians, um, 15 folks in the food service um, area, uh, first student is about seven drivers short. To name a few of the positions, it's only the third week of classes, but already students are seeing the effects of the staff shortage. We are uh, in, a, in a tough spot as far as food service goes. This week we cut back and just are doing sack lunches. They're, they're compliant, they meet all the nutritional requirements, they're free as were hot lunches. But we've cut back at four of the elementary buildings um, and, and just to a sack lunch service. The other four K-5 buildings will go to sack lunch service um, completely um, this, this coming week. Two factors cause this change. Shortfalls in staff and also our shortfalls in food. We're not getting our orders. Uh, from our large suppliers, we're you know feeding 3,000 or more students per day. We can't just run down to Costco and and, and buy a bunch of burgers and, and, and grill them up. But the most significant staffing need right now is affecting special education students. Special education paraprofessionals um, is the most significant need as I see it. 15 positions um, across the district. Even more positions are open for general paras. Paraprofessional, more of a general transportation, discretionary noon duty at some of our middle schools. That equates to 40 positions. If you've ever wanted to work in the school district, now seems to be the perfect time to apply. Reporting in Bozeman, Annie Johnson, MTN News. 